The following high-definition sporting event coverage is a presentation of HDNet. Sports like you've never seen before. Legends are made the hard way here. The really, really hard way. The Little 500 is an Indiana University tradition. A year ago, the women's race went to the wire with just a few inches separating elation from despair. It's the world's greatest college weekend. They'll ride into legend today. The weather in Bloomington, Indiana is perfect for the 55th annual Little 500. Today, the women's race 100 laps around this 410 meter cinder track in a relay race that is like no other. And hello again, everybody. I'm Jack Edwards. Normally there is an unbridled effervescent attitude and environment here in Bloomington for Little 500 weekend. This year, however, there is a somber tone to it. Many people are wearing these ribbons in memory of Ashley Krause. She was a sorority sister at Kappa Kappa Gamma. Monday night, tragically, she was killed in an automobile accident in which the driver of the other vehicle left the scene and still has not been apprehended. It happened right in front of her sorority house. She was not a rider, but certainly a dear, dear friend of all the riders and all the sisters for Kappa Kappa Gamma. That team has had a phenomenal spring, dominating the spring racing series here at Indiana University, of which the Little 500 is the climax. I'm joined once again by Dylan Casey, a former U.S. Postal Team member and one of the very few riders ever to win both U.S. national road titles and track titles in the same year. Unfortunately, Dylan, you've been in situations a couple of times in your pro racing career where there's actually been a death of a rider in the race. How does the athlete separate this emotional burden from the actual task of the race? Well, you know, Jack, these girls take this race very seriously, and they've been preparing all year long for this very special day. And this day is a lot more special than usually because the girls are out there racing for her. And, you know, at the end of the day, I think they got together and they decided, you know what, let's go out there and do it for Ashley. Yeah, win or lose, it's not going to mitigate the terrible loss that they all have suffered. It's going to be a very interesting test of their character to see what happens in their first moment when they really, truly are challenged. Jason Sonneborn has been part of the atmosphere here at the Little 500 for, oh, I don't know, a decade or so. Jason, what's the vibe down in the infield? Well, the, the vibe's very alive down here, Jack. All the teams are excited about the race. A couple are more excited than others because they have that prospect of winning, winning the trophy today. Um, at the top of that list has got to be Kappa Alpha Theta and Kappa Kappa Gamma. Uh, Kappa Kappa Gamma placed three girls in the top 10 in ITTs. Kappa Alpha Theta has two of the strongest riders on the track, Nicole Vincent and Liz Milne. Um, look for a great day out of both of those teams. And Teeter's going to try to sneak right up there at the end. They, they were in the sprint last year at the end. Count on them to be in it this year as well. Jason, if I've only learned one thing in my short experience at the Little 500, it's that the more you prepare for the expected, the more you have to experience the unexpected. And certainly we're going to see some of that today. The riders who take part in this race come back decades after they have finished riding for their sororities or their fraternities, as we'll see in the men's race, or their dorms or their houses or even their independent teams. Let's hear about the tradition from the riders in their own words. Little 500 is one of IU's biggest traditions. Uh, it's been going on for over 50 years now. The uh, Little 500 is really an interesting event because it's an intramural event, but it's unlike any other intramural event around. Indiana University has a really strong intramural program, whether that be basketball or football or whatever, but that really pales in comparison to the Little 500. Honestly, I didn't know much about it coming into school as a freshman, but um, first time I was here at the race, my freshman year, it just kind of encaptured me, the whole atmosphere, and just seeing like what, how much work and dedication these riders put into it. It was started by a guy named Howie Wilcox. Uh, he noticed uh, the high population of students riding bikes around campus, and he decided it'd be a good idea to start a bike race for it. 
I'm starting to get a bigger grasp rather than it's just, you know, a fun weekend or out there to ride a bike. Like, it's an amazing event. It raises a ton of money for scholarships. They give out like $34,000 scholarships every year. So it's huge and it's just, it's awesome to be really a part of the history because it really is a defining moment in IU's history. The culture of Little 500 IU is like so big. I mean, like, like I said, it's more than a bike race. I mean, we do this all year round. And the people out here aren't really our competitors, they're more of our friends. There's a lot of camaraderie involved in uh, the Little 500 race day. You can see just all the fans in the stands, 18, 20,000 people, just all the different colors and everything. Just, and it's just, it's really special. And hundreds of students do benefit through the efforts of the Indiana University Student Foundation, which uses this event in large part to raise funds for scholarships. Dylan, it's not like the Tour de France. It's not like any of the classics. It's not a one-day race. This, this is something that takes over their lives, and it is truly unique. Yeah, you know, Jack, like I said, they spent a whole year preparing for today, but they, they acquire memories that are going to last a lifetime today. This is a very unique race. It's very special. You know, like you said, there's alumni, they come back every year. You can you step foot into town and you can feel the buzz and the energy, the excitement. It's a special day. Yeah, as, a, as a great pro rider, as a former teammate of Lance Armstrong, you certainly understand the trust of the peloton. Well, here, the riders aren't quite as experienced and as a result on a wiggly cinder track, sometimes you just see some epic pile-ups. There were a couple of broken collarbones last year, but no serious injuries. Dylan, what do you do if you're not the first guy, but you see you're going into it? You know, Jack, the best thing to do is to look away from the crash, because as soon as you look at the first person to go down, you're headed in the same direction, you know? Of course, we saw from some of those pictures from last year, that's just, you can't avoid it, and sometimes you just got to hold on. Yeah, well, <laughs> trying not to look at it, uh, maybe a little easier said than done for some of these IU students. We're gonna put it on the cinder track just minutes from now. It's the women's little 500 for 2005. HDNet Sports comes your way live from Bloomington, Indiana and the Indiana University campus. Getting set for the women's Little 500. The Little 500, of course, got very famous with the movie Breaking Away. And we are just a few minutes away from uh, having our race for 2005. The women's race in 2004, it was strategic through the first part, through the middle part, and it came out to one all-out sprint at the very end, and it did not get any closer than this. And green flag. The little 500 is underway for the women in 2004. 100 laps coming. It's just a shade over 25 miles. Got these girls are trained. Oh, oh, there's a big wreck on the back. And we have a wreck going into the bodies. Third. We are going yellow. The track. We go yellow. And the yellow flag is out. They'll have to hold their position. Oh, and look at this. We saw the teeter woman going over to the Kappa girl and say, hey, why don't you come through and have a turn at the front here? You know, there's more than one person here in the race, so. between the riders. When they're coming into the turn and the slower girls on the outside, we'll push them aside or maybe give them a little tap on the hip, let them know they're coming. Kappa Kappa Gamma in green, Teeter in black. It's Sap for Kappa Kappa Gamma, and it is Kovac for the Teeter women. I think you're going to see three explode out of the second turn. This is where you said the race was going to be run right here. They're going into traffic, though. Kovac tries to put it down. She needs to pass her if it's going to happen. Sap has the inside, and she's answering. They are blowing by the pack. 
Sapp trying to hold the inside line. Kovac, so strong, but she's losing inches here, going the long way. Kovac down the stretch, it's wheel for wheel, and photo. Photo. oh, I think oh. Sapp had her by about a rim. Oh. I think Kappa Kappa Gamma has won it, but they'll have to go photo. You know, I don't know, this is down to the photo. I don't think this race comes down to a photo finish very often, but last year definitely had us down to the wire, Jack. Unbelievable. It was almost as if it was tire pressure. You know? yeah. <laughs> Two more pounds in the green rider's wheels. <laughs> and it swelled the rubber just enough to get it across the line. You know, if this race is four feet longer, I think Teeter in black wins this race. Yeah, it would have been a completely different result last year. Very exciting. Well, Kappa Kappa Gamma wearing green last year. They'll be wearing all yellow this year. They took the victory lap last year. And they returned three of the four riders from that championship team. And as we told you, they are wearing the armbands, the blue armbands that have Ashley Krause's initials on them. Ashley Krause killed in a tragic automobile accident just Monday night, and her funeral was just yesterday in Indianapolis and the entire sorority house attended. A few minutes ago, Jason Sonneborn had a chance to speak with the Kappa Kappa Gamma riders. I'm down here with the girls from Kappa Kappa Gamma, arguably the strongest team in this year's race. It's been a tragic week. Uh, the, the IU community and the Little Five community has been here to support you guys all week. Have you moved past the tragic event? Or are you guys ready to go for today? I don't think we'll ever completely move past it, but um, the entire community, the entire uh, Little Five community, our sorority, all the Greeks have been so helpful in us, um, just supporting us and supporting what we're doing today and just really helping us to um, get through this together. So. Okay. Uh, I spoke with their coach, Bill Noss, earlier. A lot of pressure is on these girls. They are arguably the strongest team in the race. Uh, three of them in the top ten in ITTs. What is your strategy going into the race, Meredith? Um, I think just to really focus on today and um, let our emotions put them aside for right now and just really give it our all because we've done that all season and Ashley would want us to do that today. So um, just ride, ride our hearts out for her. So. That's what we're planning on doing. <laughs> Absolutely, I'm sure you were. Kelsey, is there is there a way that you want the race to unfold today? Um, well, I want to see us do our best and go out fighting and fight to the end. And if we come out on top, that would be wonderful. But we just want to leave everything out in the track today. So that's what we'll be pleased with. OK, I think you guys will. Who's going to be on the bike at the end? Um, Whoever's ready. <laughs> yeah, we're not really sure yet, but hopefully. Your event time, we're ladies the race and gentlemen, 315. Out, so. Okay, little fives an ad hoc event. These girls are going to adapt, and I'm sure they'll be there at the end. I'm going to go back up to Jack and Dylan in the booth. Jason, thank you. Dylan Casey, uh, you could hear in their voices that uh, they, they haven't gotten into race day ritual yet. You, you could see holding hands. They are supporting each other physically as well as emotionally. Yeah. What's going to happen when they hit that first moment of adversity? Are we going to find out if it's if it's make or break time at that point, or are they just good enough athletes to be able to ride through something? Well, you know, Jack, I think... It, I think it's safe to say they actually have an extra teammate today. So when it really comes down to crunch time, they're going to have something extra because, you know, they, they have a whole new perspective on what really matters. And I think they're going to, like they said, they're going to leave it all out there on the track today. Kappa Alpha Theta wearing the royal blue with the number five on their back being the fifth fastest qualifier is a team that must be watched carefully. A real veteran team with a great one-two punch of Liz Milne and Nicole Vincent. Nicole Vincent, an extraordinarily strong individual rider. Now, it's a 100-lap race on a hot day. How much can these one-two punch teams depend on their one and two to get them through without having to go down to three and four for important laps? Well, you know, the, the interesting thing, Jack, is that I think this is one of the first warm days that they've had here in Indiana in a while. And so that means that all the riders aren't really acclimated to the heat. And so it's going it, to, they should have a different game plan. They're going to have to rely on going a little bit deeper in the lineup and not just have it all on their one or two best riders. It's going to be important to stay hydrated. They got to pay attention out there to, you know, stay on top of the game. It's going to add a whole new dimension. How would it affect you as a pro rider going from Northern Europe, say, where it's usually pretty gray, moist, and cool, down to some place like maybe coastal Spain where you're yeah. getting baked? Yeah, you know, I, I remember some of those early races where we'd, we'd come down from Belgium and go down to Spain, and 
everybody would be salty and, and really suffering from the heat and all of our directors and coaches would be telling us to drink more water and stuff like that. So you, you, you have to be methodical about it because it, it will make a difference, especially on the last couple of laps. Uh, you've raced on all kinds of surfaces, but cinder, that's something completely different. And you can see that you know it's going to get worn during this race. It's going to get drier during that race. And strangely enough, sometimes cinder gets more wiggly when it's dry than when it's wet because the layers don't stick to each other. So we're going to have to keep a close eye on that. Jason Sonneborn is going to be moment to moment on the condition of the track and also what's going on in the infield. Jason? Well, it's a hot day down here, Jack, which is going to dry out the track a little bit. I'm down here with Chris Wytowicz, the coach of the Teeter women team. They came in a close second last year. Chris, what kind of strategy do you have planned today to maybe change, change the outcome? Yeah, last year, I don't think the strategy was that great. They uh, had their best rider ride way too hard at the front of the race. Uh, it's a bad idea. And then she, she lost by one inch. And if she would have just rested a little bit, she could have won that race. So we're going to make sure our, our last guy is really rested for the sprint. And we're going to try to come around at the end. We're going to try to do what they did to us. So Chris's team is loaded with, with four strong riders. Um, Jess Lindemann's returning. Mia Dragon's returning. Katie Douglas is returning. Uh, Chris and, and Sarah Reich. Sarah Reiki. Chris, who's going to be on the bike at the end if it comes down to a sprint? Uh, it's going to be Mia Dragon. Okay, is she, is she better leading it out from the front or is she better coming around? She's got a good 10 second sprint and we want her to come around. Okay, Jack and Dylan, look for that today. They're going to be right up there with Kappa and Theta. It's going to be a great race. All right, Mia Dragon, we will remember the name and see if she gets her chance for that 10 seconds to the line at the very end of it. You know, uh, any sports viewer has uh, suffered through a few bad versions of the national anthem, but uh, if you have an HD recording device, roll it now because uh, Sylvia, Sylvia McNair, who got her master's here at Indiana University and is a two-time Grammy winner, is going to sing the anthem. We heard her rehearsing earlier in the day, and it is one of the most beautiful renditions of our national anthem that you ever will hear. The bikes are laid down on the track, the riders have gotten their final instructions from their coaches, and they are ready with the invocation from the stage for the Women's Little 500 for 2005. Coming now to the platform, ladies and gentlemen, this is his final Little 500 as he serves the pastorate at St. Paul's Church. Please welcome the good father, Dan Atkins. Good afternoon, I invite you, if faith and conscience permit, to stand with me and we'll pray before the race. Can I ask you to, uh, to pray with me for a minute? Thank you. Loving God, we stand together on the threshold of this year's Little 500, and we thank you for the bonds of friendship and teamwork that bring us together. In our joy and our celebration, we are still very much aware of the brokenness of the world and its pain. We remember senior Ashley Krauss and her family. We are conscious, too, of all those who have given their lives in the cause of freedom and democracy, especially Specialist Brent Hershey, Captain Michael Todd Fiscus, Master Sergeant Michael Heister, Specialist Norm Kyle Snyder. Please grant comfort and healing to their families and loved ones. Bless our riders, adding a spirit of fair play to their gifts of skill and endurance. Help them to be humble in victory and magnanimous in defeat. May they compete in safety to the end of the race. Bless all who are here to lend their encouragement. And when this day is done, give us all a safe journey home, happy memories, and a peaceful rest. Amado Dios, parados juntos en las puertas de la Pequeñas quinientas este año, te agradecemos por los lazos de amistad y trabajo en equipo que nos unen. En nuestra alegría y celebración de hoy, 
nos acordamos de las penas del mundo y su dolor. Recordamos estudiante Ashley Krauss y su familia. También estamos conscientes de todos los que han dado sus vidas a causa de la libertad y la democracia, especialmente especialista Brent Hershey, capitán Michael Fiscus, sargento Miguel Heister, especialista Norm Snyder, de su consuelo y la paz a sus familias y seres amados. Por favor, bendice a los corredores, añadiendo un espíritu limpio de juego a su talento de destreza y resistencia. Ayúdalos a ser humildes en la victoria y nobles en la derrota. Que lleguen con bien hasta el fin de la carrera. Y bendice a los aquí presentes brindando apoyo. Cuando el día termine, bríndanos un buen viaje a casa, recuerdos felices y descanso en paz. United in our love for you, we pray all these things. Amen. God bless you. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing. Presenting your colors today, the Pershing Rifles Color Guard from Indiana University. Ladies and gentlemen, please join our writers and coaches in celebrating America's freedom, those who now protect it, and to honor those who have made the ultimate sacrifice. Let us pay honor to America. Ladies and gentlemen, as our special guest, Sylvia McNair presents our national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled battle yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the Sylvia McNair. We present next, ladies and gentlemen, Straight No Chaser singing Back Home Again in Indiana. And of course, this the traditional time for the balloon release. The balloons today will be released in memory of Ashley Krauss, Kappa Kappa Gamma, and Brett Hershey of Sigma Chi. Straight No Chaser, ladies and gentlemen. The 
new morning sends all its fragrance from the fields I used to roam. When I dream about when the moonlight on the Wabash, then I long for my Indiana home. Back home again. Straight no chaser. If you are in the infield and not wearing official credentials as a participant or an official, please move to the grandstands or spectator areas. Only properly accredited personnel are permitted in the infield during the race. Our grand marshal and race starter is Paul Forsyth and Team Kenda Tire. With members in 10 states, Team Kenda Tire is one of the most active women's racing teams in the U.S. today. In addition to being an elite team racing at the national level, Team Kenda Tire maintains a developmental team to offer more women the opportunity to experience the sport of bicycle racing. Team members range in age from 11 to 54 years old, with occupations ranging from both students and teachers to attorneys and doctors. The team was formed in 1998 and many collegiate riders, including Indiana University, have been members of the team over the last six seasons, including some past Little 500 champions. Ride smart, keep your head up, good luck in God's speed. And now the words we've been waiting to hear. The traditional charge to the riders is from Team Kenda Tire. Mount your swing bicycles. And they are getting set to go. They'll have a couple of warm-up laps behind the pace car, and then it will be 100 times around this 410-meter cinder track on the campus of Indiana University. A lot of goosebumps have been raised. Packed house on the near side stands. We'll be back for race action. It's the women's Little 500. The Little 500, of course, became nationally famous with the movie Breaking Away. They are coming up to the start-finish line for their final warm-up lap. And we will run through the teams for you. The first three rows really have the realistic winners. There was a team that came from 17th back in 1989, beyond control, setting a record of one hour, six minutes, 58.9 seconds in winning it. That record could fall today for several reasons because the track is in extremely fast condition right now. And we are anticipating that they'll go green. But Dylan Casey, quickly, this is not like a normal race start. They do it Indy 500 style, three abreast. Yeah, it's crazy. You know, it, oftentimes the first lap doesn't really matter in a race. But in the little 500, it's really important to be in the front at the beginning because these guys are nervous. Somebody's going to crash, and that could just split the field in half in the first lap. They come to the start-finish line, and the race is on. The women's little 500 for 2005 at Indiana University. 
Now, it was on the first lap that we saw that horrific crash because these riders are not used to riding in close quarters. And if you have a little bump or a lean or something gets wiggly up front, sometimes panic sets in. That's right, Jackie. You can see the Kappa riders setting the pace early on, and I bet the, the strategy is let's stay out in front, stay out of trouble, and get to the end of this race, which is really what matters. Kappa, Kappa, Gammas. Rider to start the race is Kelsey Cooper. Alpha Phi has dropped right in behind her. And the first few laps are really about sorting things out. Jason Sonneborn, what do you got? If you can feel the, the jitterbugs, Kelsey Cooper's on the front. She's leaving nothing to chance right now. She wants to be on the front. It's more work. She's, she knows she's one of the strongest riders out there. Look at her laying it down. It's an excellent first set for Kelsey. Remember, these are single gear bikes. And you can switch bikes, but it has to be a legal changeover. You can't get the running start where if you're going to have a, a bike change, you're going to see one rider in progress while the other rider is still going. Yeah, that, Jack, there's a whole strategy to doing the bike change. Sometimes it looks like a rider is actually going to be trying to lay down an attack, but really what they're trying to do is just set up the exchange by getting out in front of the pack a little bit. So when they throw their teammate back in, their teammate is able to rejoin the bunch without spending any extra energy. Kappa Alpha Theta in the royal blue is a team to watch very seriously. And right now, Cooper is just tucked in behind the Kappa rider, Nicole Vincent. And now Vincent says here, you pull for a while. How much more effort is it to be on the front than to be tucked in behind the leader? Well, Jack, they say it's about 33% difference. So in other words, if you're sitting on the second wheel, you spend about 33% less energy to go the same speed. But at the same time, there's a psychological difference too. You know, sometimes when you're the rider out in front, it takes a lot more physical and mental energy. But as you see here, other riders want to have a shot at the front, and we're going to see the field really stretch out again. You see riders put on a big burst of speed before they have an exchange. This is psychedelics in the fuchsia, if you will, <laughs> making the exchange. And you'll often see a rider get spat almost out the back of the pack on these changeovers. It is so difficult to take these coaster brake bikes, stop the bike, make a clean exchange, and have some kind of progress going. That's right, Jack. And not only that, but the back of the field right now is falling apart. And you'll see this exchange coming up. She's got to hand the bike off, slow down enough so that she can grab onto it, but not so slow that she puts her teammate down at the back. Like, that's what happened here. And now she's got a, she's got a gap that she's got to try to fill. Here we are live. D Dylan Jack, I want you guys to take note. Alpha Phi, the team in black, Katie Thompson, she followed that lead wheel of Kappa Kappa Gamma out, and she's sitting in an excellent position. She's kind of catching a draft. Uh, she's going to... She's going to catch a draft, feel good on her first set, and then go for a burn here shortly. It looks like we have a rider down already. Not Coming out of turn four, and this surface gets really wiggly. And a rider who was on her bike, I think, just reacted to it and lost her center of balance. The yellow's out, and they'll take care of the rider. So, Jason, tell us what the rules are when the yellow flag comes out. Well, when the yellow flag comes out, Dylan, you can't improve your position to the leaders. So what the officials try to do is they get the leaders in the bike race to maintain a steady tempo. Everyone else in the field is not supposed to improve their position to, that, to those leaders. Uh, you guys talked about the weather earlier. It's a hot day. What caused that wreck, she was a little bit, a little bit outside of the groove. Um, and, and the cinder is a little bit shakier outside of the groove. So maybe, you know, maybe five, six, seven feet away from the gutter. Uh, look for lots of wrecks out there. Alpha Z Delta's Lindsay Berry is the rider who went down. She's being attended to immediately. They have a redundant EMS staff here that can handle multiple crashes and multiple injuries. And every once in a while you do see them. But right now, this field seems to have a lot fewer yips than the one did last year. Of course, last year they were riding on a track that was a little bit slick. They've gone back to green. Jason, for the favored teams, how much does an early yellow flag help? Is it any factor at all? Does it keep them any fresher later in the race or not? 
Well, it does impact their strategy, Jack. The, the top teams, Teeter, Theta, and Kappa, they all told me before the race, they want to keep the race very fast. The yellow does, does give it a chance to slow down a little bit, and what you see is more of a bunch-up impact. Uh, teams come together under that yellow. It, 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 and you, you guys shouldn't see any surprise. Exactly what we talked about earlier. You have Cap up there, you have Theta, and you have Teeter. You know, look, looking to do a lot of the work and keep the race fast. And Alpha Phi is kind of sitting, sitting in very nicely in that fourth position. Looks like we have a rider here trying to do an attack. Alpha Gamma Delta is taking an early run at it. This is a team that among the four riders has just one little 500 under their belts. You saw the Alpha Gamma Delta exchange there. The number on their bikes reflects their qualifying position for the little 500. So Jack, we're eight laps into this race and we're already down to a lead pack of 18 riders. So today's winner is gonna come from that group of 18. Out of 32, well, we thought it was going to get sorted out pretty early, and most people think that by the time this race is half over at 50 laps, that there are only going to be five or six teams that are in there, and maybe only two or three. Kappa Kappa Gamma's rider wearing the yellow has gone out with a little burst of speed here. We'll see if we're going to get an exchange coming, and it appears to be that way as Jessica Sapp is out on the track. You'll see the riders swing wide of the pack, and then try to make a clean exchange, not to lose too much momentum. Hey, I want to, and, and, and you guys need to pay attention. The Theta Rider is going to cue off that, off that Kappa Kappa Gamma exchange. You're going to see Thetas come in for an exchange the next lap. These two teams, they know each other well. They're always in the running, and you'll see them counter off of each other. Can Theta go over the horizon on Kappa Kappa Gamma and capitalize on that kind of a changeover? What kind of effort does it take to do that kind of a? You open up that kind of gap. You're seeing it right now, Jack. That's Nicole Vincent on the bike for Theta. What she's doing is she's putting a little distance between herself and the Kappa rider. She's going to bring it into Liz Milne. Yeah, but here comes Jessica Sapp. And Sapp about 30 yards down on the exchange. And there she goes on the inside. And it looks as if she's going to have about 110 in front by the time the Kappa Alpha Theta rider gets her rhythm going. And, and Teeter, the team in purple, our number three team, they came in and did an exchange as well. So you're seeing a lot of strategy, a lot of thought by these coaches. They're queuing off each other on when they're going to come in and do their exchanges. Is that a reflection of inner team strategy, or are they really keying off each other right now? Is this turning into a, a, a chess match out here already? It, it, it's, top, it's top down, Jack. Everybody knows that Kappa has the strongest horsepower on the track they're all gonna they're all gonna queue off Kappa uh, Bill Noss is in a tough position of knowing that he has the strongest four riders now he has the task of winning the race with those strong four riders Bella Veloce making an exchange Bella Veloce in the multicolored jersey with the green yellow and red Kappa Kappa Gamma in the yellow out in front with Alpha Gamma Delta Tucked in behind in second. Jack, this race is already blown apart. I mean, there's riders all over the place. If Kappa and Alpha Delta get together, they could they have the potential here to lap the field. Those little games, those little sudden uh, alliances happen almost spontaneously, don't they? That's right. Well, these two are going to get together and say, hey, why don't we work together? Although now the other rider's coming in for an exchange, so the Kappa Kappa Gamma rider's all by herself. Although it looks like Teeter and Theta are gonna bridge the gap to her right now. Well, we've seen this happen so many times, and as the years go on and teams learn from the past and training methods become more refined, riders put in more miles, we have seen greater and greater parity and it seems that every time you think somebody's about to blow it open, a couple other teams hook up. They make this short pace line. Maybe it's four riders, three riders, and they dial her right back in. They just reel her right back in. Jessica Sapp picking her way through traffic right now. Yeah, the, the fact that the riders not only have to keep track of when they need to do exchanges, but who's on the lead lap, who's traffic, I mean, it adds a whole new element to this race. Kappa Kappa Gamma is going to push it for another lap as Sap says she's still good to go here. 
But again, she's out there alone in front of that pace line. So she is, as you described earlier, pushing 33% more effort to keep that speed. And everybody else is benefiting from that if they can stay within a couple of feet. What's interesting here is, is Kappa, is there's a pretty big gap between the Kappa rider and the Theta and Tita rider. And it looks like she's gonna come in and do an exchange right now. Kappa, Kappa, Gamma in yellow going for the exchange. Sap is off the bike and Meredith Horner is on. And even with the exchange, she's able to look over her left shoulder and tuck in there and she sees the Kappa Alpha Theta rider wearing the royal blue and the teeter rider wearing the purple. And now Alpha Fee's rider goes out with Horner. Alpha Fee, number four in black. Let's go back and look at that exchange for Kappa Kappa Gamma. Yeah, I'd say that's a great exchange. Put her teammate right back in there, right in the field. She didn't have to expend too much energy. And here she is back on the front. That's Meredith Horner, senior. Three previous little 500s. No substitute for experience. Not at all, and it's obvious that Kappa's come out here today ready to throw down from the very first lap. They always look to the pits. They send signals, visual signals. They're talking to each other, but it is opening up a little bit. Kappa, Kappa, Gamma with about a 25-yard lead on the Alpha Phi rider who is really fading right now, and Kappa Alpha Theta coming up on her wheel. A good final lap here for Horner as Kappa Kappa Gamma looks for another exchange. Jason Sonneborn is on the infield. Go ahead, Jason. And, and Jack and Dylan, you have to see what's going on. Meredith Horner is absolutely cranking right now. Uh, Kappa realizes they have an advantage on on Cap Alpha Theta and, and the Teeter women. She seems to be pulling away. The strategy at this point in the race has got to be, we're the strongest team. We're hurting the teams where there's a gap opened up already. Cap is laying it down. And I'm going to go back up to you guys. Kelsey Cooper is getting ready in the pit area. You can be penalized for an illegal exchange. Although the, the rules seem to be a little bit loose on that. Looks like Kappa's coming in for another exchange. Caroline Andrew is the new rider for Kappa Kappa Gamma. And she stays in the lead after the exchange, and that is significant because, as we said earlier, we often see teams lose a tremendous number of positions, sometimes 15, 20 spots. Yeah, but look at this exchange. It was flawless. Puts her right back in there on the front. She's able to launch it right back out in front. It's obvious that they've just put the hammer down. I'm sure their coach is just saying, go. Don't wait for anything. Let's just take this race right now. Caroline Andrew is going right past other riders and getting huge vocal support from the Kappa crowd. This is a program, and it really is a program for the Kappas that goes about nine riders deep. There were six who were in contention to be in the final four who get selected to ride. That is a great problem to have, to have to sort them out. That's right, Jack. You know, I'm sure we all know about what it's like to try to get into a fraternity or sorority and some of the crazy stories we hear. I can't imagine what it's like to try to get on the little five team. Well, right now it is a one-team race. And unless something goes wrong with Kappa Kappa Gamma, and it could be as easy as an exchange, right now it's about a third of a lap for a lead as Kappa Alpha Theta makes an exchange. And that is a little bit of a surprise, although Kappa Kappa Gamma came in highly qualified with three of the top ten individual time trial 
riders, one would have thought that Kappa Alpha Theta at least could stay with them through the first quarter of the race. We're not even a quarter of the way there, and the Kappas are getting ready for another exchange. This is a clinic going on. And Andrew wants another lap. She's feeling pretty good. It's pretty amazing. We've got almost uh, 77 laps to go, and this race is almost over, Jack. Yeah, right now it is about 120 yards, which in a race like this, this early, is a pretty significant bulge. Well, not only that, but the other teams have obviously already lost their morale. Everybody's trying to figure out what's going on. They're spread out all over the track. People are trying to do exchanges. And the Theta Riders, they've got one objective right now, and that's to throw down the hammer. All right, well, here is the chance for Kappa Kappa Gamma to have some trouble on the exchange. Kelsey Cooper, the new rider. Caroline Andrew gets off. The bike never stopped. And the lead is down to about 65 or 70 yards after the new rider, Cooper, gets her momentum. But she's fresh. She's flying. And, and Jack, more than anything, it's a confidence thing. What she saw in that first set, Theta's rider, Liz Milne, she was absolutely put in the hurt locker. Um, and she, she is our ITT winner. Um, more than anything, Cap is establishing themselves as a team that's gonna, gonna drive this race and gonna lay the precedent for how this race unfolds. I, Theta, at this point, just kinda has to react. And I guarantee you, Tom Schwegler is in there trying to figure out how to react to this. Well, they have got their focus. We all wondered, with the loss of their dear friend just four days ago in the funeral just yesterday, if they could hold it together. And, you know, sometimes young people do amazing things. And right now, Kappa Kappa Gamma is doing something. Jason, is this a potential record-setting performance by Kappa Kappa Gamma? It doesn't seem that they have anybody out there with them to help in the effort. It would seem easier as we look at an exchange. Absolutely, Jack. That's a nice exchange. That's that's a rider exchange. You can see her pick the bike up. Uh, her, her palm is on the stem. It's an excellent race day exchange. A race day exchange is just a good completed exchange. Uh, as far as record setting performances, you're absolutely going to see it. The ITT records fell this year. The qualification record fell this year. Look for a very, very fast race. It would not surprise me in the slightest to see Kappa set the, set the highest mark for a quick race. The bikes are white, but that's about the only difference between the bikes this year and the bikes last year. Of course, athletes do tend to get better year after year after year. And Kappas are just exuding with confidence right now. They have they have three riders back from last year's team, and they're you know they're just throwing down the gauntlet right now, doing everything they can to hurt every other team. They set a qualifying record for the fifth time. They race from the front as the pole winner. They're the defending champs by about the width of a tire last year. And Jack, this is unparalleled in the women's race, really kind of what they're trying to do. I mean, it, it's, it's reminiscent of the cutters taking a lap in the 2000 race. They're really trying to take a lap right from the start. It, it's, it's, it's inspiring to watch. Jessica Sapp is back on the bike. And her lead over Kappa Alpha Theta is, with the soccer field marked out here, it's pretty easy. That's about 80 yards after the exchange. So to be plus 80 after the exchange with a fresh rider, the quality of sap now in the saddle, you got to feel pretty good if you're a Kappa fan. Yeah, that's right. You know, and the other teams, if they even want to have a piece of this race, are really going to have to get together because this Kappa rider, they're just riding away from the race all by themselves. Okay, so if you're a coach, are you cutting a deal with somebody right now? Absolutely, because you don't want to have your riders just pull one at a time. You really have to collaborate. So if I'm the Theta or the Delta Gamma coach, I'm getting over there and say, hey, look, we got 70 laps to go. Let's get together and make sure this race isn't over before it's even done. All right, Jason, so you're the guy with the deep knowledge of all the different alliances hidden and, and obvious here. Who's going to hook up with whom? And, and where is the sudden friendship going to come from teams that were supposed to be rivals? Well, it, it's on an as-needed basis right now, Jack. Uh, what you're, what you're going to see are, are, are Tita, Teeter and Theta and Bella Veloce. They're, they're going to try to get back in this race, and the only way that they can do it is to work together. Uh, playing devil's advocate, as Dylan knows, the ideal thing would just to be 
just to be to get towed back up to cap it and not have to do any work. It's 100 yards now. Jessica Sapp is just putting the hammer down. And she is actually lengthening her lead. D Dylan, you know how tough that is. She's out there riding all alone right now, um, very early in the race. W w what's going through her mind? Well, you know, I, I, have, I have a feeling that our coach is just telling her, don't worry about the end, just put it all down right now. I mean, they're just taking a big gamble. And it's really exciting to see the girls race like this. I mean, this is real race day action happening here. And everybody else is just w going along for the ride. And I had, the, you know, the other teams, they've really got to get together right now. Otherwise, these Kappa riders are just going to take away. Yeah, the Kappa riders out are out in front, and lapped riders are sucked into the vortex and just going on a nice little tool through the park here. Yeah, well, you know, Jack, if you want to get technical, having a rider behind you actually can make you faster. Helps a little bit, huh? Yeah, that's right, yeah. because... The rider in the front is the one breaking the wind, and the air behind her is going to get dirty. But if there's another rider or two sitting on her wheel, she can go just a little bit faster, and it looks like she's going to come in here for an exchange. Yeah, Jessica Sapp, the rider on the bike. Meredith Horner getting ready to go, and here's the exchange. Another it's cross. clean. Horner's away, and I'm looking back for Kappa Alpha Theta. And we're talking about... 150 yards. The gap's definitely growing. Well, from a coaching perspective, knowing what these young women have gone through, is this the smartest thing to do? To say, don't be restrained. Pour your emotions into the bike. Every turn of the crank, you know, let the effort flow. Just, just get rid of it that way? Well, you know, I'm sure that they didn't come into the race thinking that it was just going to be an automatic throwdown. They were going to try to ride away with it. But we saw the field just explode. And they got, they were into this situation or in this position to be out in front all by themselves. And I think their coach recognized some weakness in the other teams. And that's what's happening right now is they're monopolizing on that weakness. Well, it is turning into an exhibition here. Kappa Kappa Gamma going for its fifth women's little 500 title. Just blowing the field away right now. Alpha Phi a couple of laps ago had a disastrous exchange in which the bike went down. Meredith Horner signals one lap to go and then I'm getting off. Jack, I think the gap has grown to almost half a lap now. And in fact, it looks like a pursuit race because it is exactly half a That's lap right. right now. That's right. Soon she'll be looking across the track to see where the field is. And that's actually going to fuel her even better. Now that she'll be able to see the other side and see the, the field chasing her, it's a huge advantage. Here she is coming in for an exchange. All right, this is Meredith Horner getting off the bike and Caroline Andrew getting on. And again, pretty clean exchange, not as nifty as some of the previous ones we've seen from Kappa Kappa Gamma, but they are dealing with that huge margin of error. Jason Sonneborn is in the Kappa's pits. Yeah, Jack, I'm down, I'm down here with Bill Noss, the coach of the Kappas. We can't believe it really what's going on. They have a half a lap lead. Bill, I, I'm gonna grab Bill. As you can see, he's always doing coaching. Meredith, how did that last set feel? It was okay, I had the stomach flu, so. What, what, what you guys, hey Bill. What, what you guys do, are doing is unparalleled. I, I haven't seen anything like this in the women's race. Yeah, this is uh, really, it's really very nice. Uh, I'll be honest with you, this wasn't our strategy, but we always look to see where there's an opening, and lo and behold, we thought there was an opening within the first 15 laps, and we said, hey girls, let's go with it, okay? And uh, every time we've been in the front, the other teams have been working hard too, so we felt comfortable when we were on the front pushing. And we're going to keep it rolling until they can get back in it or until we can lap the pack. You guys are certainly rolling. Thetas is struggling to catch up right now. Heck of a job. Jason, thank you. And you see the Kappa riders. It's not effortless, but the effort does look smooth right now. And on the right in the bright blue and fuchsia, that is the Alpha Gamma Delta rider getting back into the lead lap. Now that was a team that was 
nip and tuck with Kappa Kappa Gamma in the first three laps of this race. That shows the tremendous burst they've put out there, Dylan. Yeah, that's right, Jack. You know, that sometimes there's another race going on besides the one that we've been watching at the front. And those are some riders that maybe didn't get off to a good start, but now they're back in it. So th there's always somebody that comes from behind, somebody that comes out of the woodwork. Well, the drama here is an internal one for the Kappas. They are putting something down, the likes of which the women's little 500 never has seen. Here's another exchange, and it's clean, and Kelsey Cooper is back in the saddle. It looks like they're doing a pretty even set right now with each rider doing two or three laps. And uh, it's also important to note that in between, the riders are going to be doing, staying on their wind trainers, just keeping warmed up. Kappa Alpha Theta has closed the gap to about a third of a lap. So there is a little bit of progress. Teeter is in second place. And the Teeter riders now trying to put on a pretty significant first. But these teams are working at it individually, and we haven't seen those alliances that we anticipated develop. It's really hard, you know, when the girls are doing the exchanges and people are coming in and out, it's hard to get together and really get a concerted effort as teams. You know, we have a bunch of individuals out here, but right now they need to get together to really catch the Kappa rider. She's gonna ride away. Jessica Lindemann of Teeter is off the bike. It's a bike exchange. Sarah Reich is now riding for Teeter in second place. And Teeter is about 180 yards down. It's almost half a lap. So Teeter in second place, Kappa Kappa Gamma in yellow. Out in front, those are all lapped riders that are right behind the Kappa Kappa Gamma rider, Kelsey Cooper. Or Caroline Andrews, excuse me. Yeah, you know, Jack, you can kind of tell from her body language that she's getting a little bit tired. She might lose some of that adrenaline that they had in the opening lap. She's starting to look down. She's, she, her face is looking a little long. If I'm the coach, I'm on the side saying, don't give up yet. Keep it going. Kappa Kappa Gamma coming in for an exchange. Let's keep a close look here and you guys are catching up, see huh? what happens. Up. It looks pretty clean. Jessica Sapp, a very strong rider who was in that Victoria Sprint last year is now there. Teeter has made a significant bite chewing into that lead. It's now down to about 80 yards. Jason Sonneborn, what do you got for information down at track level? Here we go. I'm down here with a renowned coach, Tom Schwegler of the Thetas. He's leading them back into it, pulling out all the horsepower. Tom, you have Nicole on there right now. She's closed a lot of the gap. Well, luckily, the Kappas are starting to get a little bit of tire. We're going to take advantage of that. Now we have an exchange coming in. We're going to do a quick set and then put Liz Milne back out there long. It, it, and the guys up there in the booth, he does have the horsepower to do this. He has two very strong women. Don't look for them to go anywhere soon. We'll be fine. They'll be fine. They're riding a comfortable race. Look for them at the end. Good exchange. Cap Alpha Theta with the, for women, unorthodox exchange of going off the back of the saddle. And often you see disastrous results. But that was a clean one that kept the momentum going. So maybe Cap Alpha Theta makes a race out of this. We've got 58 laps to go. Here's that exchange, Dylan. Yeah, it's, a, it's the, they're kind of, that's their trademark, that very special exchange. Sometimes it works out and sometimes it's a disaster. The lead is about 90 yards and Teeter and Kappa Alpha Theta are riding in pretty close quarters, not really in tandem as one would anticipate that they might do because they can help each other get back into this thing. Yeah, that's right, Jack. They really need to get together and say, hey, let's take turns pulling. You pull a half a lap, I'll pull a half a lap. And that way, they're really going to take some time out of the Kappa rider who has to pull the entire lap. That's the only way they're going to get her back. We heard from Jason down in the pits as he tried to get a, an interview with a Kappa rider just after she had finished. And anybody who's ever exerted the big effort on a bike knows 
you're, you're pretty gassed out there, but even when you're anaerobic, can you communicate effectively? Oh, yeah. If you can't use your use your voice, then you'll start to figure out other ways to communicate, either <laughs> with your elbows or your head. It, and Meredith Horner is, is a fit rider, and she got off the bike, and she was gassed. So you can, I mean, the feedback that I have is how the race is going. You can tell Cap is using a lot of energy early, right? They're trying to define the race and make the race early. You know, Thetas and Teeter, they're going to they're gonna try to work together and, and catch back up. I w I'd say they're expending less energy than Cap is at this point. Sap is off the bike. And Kelsey Cooper is on. Well, and Teeter's actually chasing a little bit as you saw Theta just go by pull, pulling the group along. Well, it does not look as if this lead is being seriously threatened yet. Yeah, the gap is a little bit smaller than it was about 15 laps ago, but it is still quite significant, and there is a sizable space out there. If it's going to close, it's going to close right now. Thetis has their strongest rider, Liz Milne, in the pit. She's going to do a bike-to-bike -bike exchange. And, and knowing Tom Schwegler, I know he wants to close this. He's not comfortable with how it stands right now. You're going to see Liz go out and try to do a lot of work and bring this back. Very slow exchange for Kappa Alpha Theta. Very <laughs> slow. The bike came to a complete halt. They did a bike-to-bike -bike as well as rider exchange. Okay. And they probably lost another 15 yards in that exchange. Here it comes. The bike-to-bike -bike really hurts them right here. It slows, slows them down. They don't have any continuity. There's no motion. Um, as you can see, she kind of has to start, start from a dead stop. These riders can push it around at about 25 miles an hour, despite the fact you're not getting a whole lot of glide out of the surface. Teeter making a burst here. It's Mia Dragon who has that great 10 seconds that her coach was talking about. The gap is down to about 40 yards. Looking at the top four as they are on the 48 Yeah, you know, you can see this field kind of forming behind her, and it's made up of lapped riders and riders that are on the back and all coming together, and that's actually going to help the other riders catch up to the Kappa rider. Because Check out the cadence on Mia Dragon here, and she is pulling Tina right back to Kappa Kappa Gamma. Here comes Dragon. On the inside is Kappa Kappa Gamma Actually, goes for an exchange. J Jack, that's, that's Katie Douglas. They're, Sorry. They're, they're very strong, and Katie just pulled it back. You saw her drop her tongue out. They got to be excited. The race is back together. Yeah, we got a new leader as the early adrenaline has worn off approaching the midpoint of this race. And I hate to give you, a, I told you so, but Liz Milne, she's right there on the front. She caught back up after that slow exchange. Yeah. So now it's Kappa Kappa Gamba that has to do some chasing. And here's that moment of adversity that we were talking about before the race. How are these already emotionally taxed athletes going to deal with this? Well, now they've really got to recollect themselves, realize that they've still got 50 laps to go. Teeter going for an exchange. Kappa Alpha Theta is on the lead right now. Teeter is second. Nope. Kappa Kappa Gamma has gone back into second on the exchange ahead of Teeter. And how this race changes. Now you have Theta on the front, yep. and Cap is trying to close the gap. The Kappa Alpha Theta rider in the royal blue. Here's, here's a look at both of these exchanges. And, and we call this theta exchange on the left. It's the ghost exchange. The rider kind of slips off the back and lets it go. At, at, at one point in time, there's nobody touching the bike. It's a little riskier. Tom thinks it's a little faster. That's why the thetas do it. I believe it is Brittany Mahoney who is riding for Kappa Alpha Theta right now. Yeah, you're right, Jack. And well, for Kappa Alpha Theta, it's still Liz Milne. Still Liz Milne, our ITT champion on the bike. They have little patches on the sides of their helmets, and I'm, I've been getting the orange ones and the pink ones confused, so you'll have to forgive me. Liz Milne, riding for Kappa Alpha Theta. Looks her, like it's lead, her lead is down to about 12 yards, maybe 15, and it's, for all intents and purposes, 
It's just the pace line right now. Most of those riders have been lapped, but you can see the cap. Oh, there's a oh. crash. Did Teeter go down? No, Bella Veloce is down. Teeter got through. Yep. We've got a yellow flag out. How much does this help Kappa Alpha Theta, which just put through a huge effort, as did Teeter, to close that gap? How much does this yellow help those two teams? Well, I think, you know, now they all kind of get to take a rest and catch their breath, reevaluate the race. It, I think it looks like somebody overlaps some wheels coming around this corner. And, uh, you know, we're getting to the halfway point. Some of the riders are getting a little bit tired, a little careless. Yeah, you can see the Bella Veloce rider just hit the, the wheel right in front of her. Fortunately, it looks like she's going to be okay. Well, the cinders do dig in, but the flip side of that is, is that you do slide a little bit. You tend not to stick as asphalt occasionally will. That's right, but it's actually kind of like a badge of honor. <laughs> Later tonight, they'll have some good stories to tell. <laughs> they can compare them to your uh, your uh, collarbone x-rays. Sure. <laughs> or you can count the brakes. <laughs> it's like playing connect the dots. <laughs> yeah, you guys are up there laughing because you've never gone down on this yeah, track. Well, exactly. <laughs> there are two kinds of riders, those who have fallen and those who are gonna, right? That's right. You know, you didn't ask the question, but the, but the sun being out in the dry conditions does make it hard on the track. Um, you want to have lots of water. That, that kind of that keeps, the, keeps the track hard and keeps it fast. Right now, these dry conditions makes it a little more dangerous. They're off. They're green again on lap 53. Kappa Alpha Theta in the royal blue. Two riders back. Kappa Kappa Gamma in the yellow. And Teeter in the purple tucked into third place. They're coming through on the inside. Those are the leaders. And it's interesting to note that the, the riders on the inside, actually coming through the inside of the corner now on the lead lap, they yell out to the riders behind them to move out of the way because, you know, you saw them coming up on lap traffic there, and there's actually track directors that will tell the lap riders to move out of the way. Kappa Delta in the orange and white. We will have to confirm that they're on the lead lap. But if they are, they've just gone into the lead. They are on the lead lap. Only a cumulative two little 500s worth of experience among the four riders for Kappa Delta. But they currently are in first place. So Kappa Delta, Kappa Alpha Theta in blue, and Kappa Kappa Gamma in yellow, and the Kappa Delta rider saying, okay, somebody else take the pace right now, and it's gone back to a more tactical pace. It was just bullets out of a gun in the first few laps. It was really exciting. You know, I don't think I've ever seen a women's little five come off the gate like that. So, so the four teams on the front right now, I kind of want you guys to confirm for me. We have Thetas up there, we have Kappa in yellow, um, KD is in the, the two-tone jersey and Teeter's right behind him. Uh, this is making out to be an exciting race. All right, we're past the midpoint. They will go 100 laps on this 410-meter track. It is just a few steps short of 25 and a half miles. They are halfway home. We'll be back to Bloomington, Indiana on HDNet. Returning to Bill Armstrong Stadium in Bloomington, Indiana, on the campus of Indiana University, I'm Jack Edwards, along with Dylan Casey and Jason Sonneborn. We're more than halfway through the 100-lap women's little 500 in the royal blue. On the front, that's Kappa Alpha Theta. Kappa Delta is also on the lead lap. Teeter and Kappa Kappa Gamma, which threatened to blow this thing open early, are also among the leaders. Big burst here. I believe it's Jessica Sapp in the saddle for Kappa Kappa Gamma getting up among the leaders. 40 to go. J Jack, I'm down here with the, co with the coach of the Teeter women, Chris Wytowicz. Kappa's did a lot of work early. You guys are sitting in a good position right now. How do you feel about your chances? Yeah, well, we did a lot of work also. So it's going to come down to who has the most heart at the end. And I believe uh, 
I believe we have the most heart. But uh, we'll see. We'll definitely see that Cap is a good team. Chris, you're a guy that did a lot of work on the bike. How much work are you telling your girls to do right now? Um, they got to go as hard as they can, but they got to be smart. For a while there, we just had to go all out the whole time. Uh, one of our riders is injured uh, from one of the little exchange wrecks we had. So um, we're trying to get her some ibuprofen so she can get back in there. Um, our rookie is kicking butt out there. Uh, so we're going to use her again real soon. But I think we, we got a good shot at winning the race. Great job so far, Chris. The girls are right up there in front. Pay attention to KD. They've yeah. snuck in there. There's four okay. teams. Ibuprofen, if I'm not mistaken, takes about 15 to 20 minutes to, to uh, get into your bloodstream. There's only about 25 minutes left in this race. I don't know how much good it's going to do. Here's Kappa Kappa Gamma's exchange. And here's Teeter's exchange. No disasters, certainly. Kappa Kappa Gamma and Teeter are on the lead right now. Kappa Alpha Theta in the blue is in third place with Kappa Delta fourth. And right now, it's Teeter and Kappa Kappa Gamma out in front. They've got a considerable gap. You know, they can really get together today right now. Jessica Sapp taking a good turn and pulling off, letting the other rider pull through. And that's what you call a short-term allegiance. <laughs> You know, if, if these two riders have the opportunity to go away right now, then it's just a two-person race, and they're going to try to get rid of the Theta rider, who's got maybe a 20, 30-yard gap. Jessica Lindemann is the Teeter rider, and this is exactly the kind of thing you were talking about earlier that we speculated maybe the, the second, third, and fourth place teams would do, but now we see one and two helping each other half a lap at a time, and the Kappa Delta rider in the orange and white at the top of your screen is really paying a price to catch these two in front. Well, that's right. You have two riders working together, and the other rider has to work all by herself to catch get across the gap, and that's really hard sometimes. And there's that exchange again. And in the long view of this race, this saving of energy among the Kappa Kappa Gamma and Teeter riders and the expenditure of energy by the Kappa Delta rider may play a role in that last 10 laps. That's right. You know, everything that happens right now is really going to have a huge effect on the last lap. We saw last year it came down to a couple of inches. And this moments like this that really have an effect on overall how it's going to come down to the final wire. Well, those two riders from Kappa Kappa Gamma and from Teeter are really putting the hammer down. And they've spread that gap up to about 40 yards now, exchanging the lead, pulling for each other. Jessica Sapp in yellow, and right now on the lead, Jessica Lindemann. Cap Alpha Theta with an exchange, and again, it is a pretty slow one as Elizabeth Oliver gets up on the bike, and Cap Alpha Theta is now down by about 100 yards. Well, that's right, and you know, now the, uh, the two lead riders have the opportunity to even open up the gap even larger because the Theta rider who just did the exchange has a huge gap to close. Just remember, Jason Sonneborn's pre-race interview where the teeter coach was saying he wanted Mia Dragon on the bike in the last lap because she has that great 10 seconds. Well, right now it's playing directly to Teeter's strength if they can keep this situation. And, and Jack, I'm down here in the pit right now. Uh, I'm in the Kappa pit. Bill Noss and Chris Wytowicz, Chris Wytowicz, the coach of the, or the coach of the teeter women team, they're looking at each other. They're talking about working together. Bill's walking down to the teeter pit right now. He's saying, we got to get rid of Thetas. This is our chance. Um, you're going to see some collaboration. They're trying to get rid of Kappa Alpha Theta and make it a two-up sprint. Yeah, but is Kappa playing right into Teeter's hands as, as you found out before the race? B Bill, excellent strategy. You're down there with the teeter coach. You guys have a good gap right now. <laughs> yes, we do. Race. Um, well, it, it got interesting again, didn't it? Um, we would rather have uh, kept a big gap, obviously, but um, we're going to work here. You we got, got a lot of racing to do yet. You, hey, you got to like your chances as a two-up sprint. I hope so. <laughs> I hope so. Yes, I do. I, I think our girls can go up against anybody. It's a 60-yard gap right now with the Kappa Alpha Theta rider trying to reconnect. Jack, Ka Kappa Delta is about halfway between, and now we see the big burst coming from the Kappa Kappa Gamma rider. Yeah, that's right, Jack, and we've got about 33 laps to go. So it, 
It's really coming down to the wire here, and I'm sure the strategies are going to change a little bit. Caroline Andrew ready to get the bike from Jessica Sapp. She's got some good running momentum going on a pretty clean exchange. You know, we've seen great exchanges from the Capitine all day long, Jack. It's obvious that they've spent a lot of time preparing for this race and really focusing on getting the, the uh, exchanges down right. All right, it's Teeter in front right now because of the Kappa Kappa Gamma exchange that we're about to see again. You know, she's focused. She's, she's really focusing on getting into the pit slow enough that the other rider can get the bike on and jump back on. It's obvious they spent some time on that. Kappa rider, and that's, that's Meredith Horner. That's Meredith. That's who we talked to earlier, and she was having some breathing difficulties. We gotta, we gotta hope she's okay. Teeter has made an exchange and is still on the lead even after the exchange. So this could be a significant moment in this race. Often when teams exchange, they give up the lead as Kappa Kappa Gamma did, but now Teeter is still out there by about 15 yards. And Jason, isn't Meredith from the Kappa team their, their foundation, their cornerstone that they've relied on for so many years? How are they going to do with her out of the race now? Yeah, she really is, Dylan. She's an incredible leader as well as a great rider. She took third in ITTs. Um, she rode well in missing out. I, it, it, it absolutely will impact them. They do have the girl that won the race last year, and that's Jess Sapp in their pit. Um, and, and, well, you know, I take that back. I look up and I see how far into the race we are. Cap is strong enough. They may be able to do it with just three. Okay. It's about a quarter mile track, so they got about seven miles to go. And, and really, literally, the coach of the cap has walked down to the coach of the teeters and said, we got to go. This is our opportunity to get rid of cap alpha theta. Let's ride this race hard. Um, that's the unique thing about Little Five and what makes it so great, the communication, um, the colors in the stands, the fans, the coaches, the entourage. It's just incredible to be down here and be a part of it. Sarah Reich is the rider for Teeter right now, we believe. And she is the leader in the purple. Kappa Kappa Gamma rider in yellow. She's looking over her shoulder saying, hey, why don't you come through here and give me a hand? Doesn't look like she's getting any cooperation. Sarah Reich on the front there. You're gonna see, you're gonna see them work together. Sarah, Sarah is a rookie, so she's still trying to get acclimated out there. It's a lot to handle in your first race to be on the lead lap. A lot to handle, a lot to think about. Kappa Kappa Gamma down to three riders. And it looks as if they're getting ready for an exchange here. See, see if Wright can put the hammer down. In, in the story right here is really arguably the second strongest team in the race, Thetas. They're not in it. Um, they're probably a half a lap down as you look out there. They're, they're just doing a lot of work, closing gaps all day long. Liz Milne's back on the bike for them, trying to close it, trying to catch back up to Cap and, and Teeter. It doesn't really look like the Cap and Teeter teams are really pulling right now. They're kind of just sitting on the front two by two, and uh, we see the Theta rider. This is going to be her opportunity to bridge the gap. Well, well, Dylan, what's it like to lose a teammate? You know, they're kind of, they're there. They might not know how to react to this. It doesn't seem like they're working that hard. Here comes a big burst from Reich on the back stretch. Maybe it's time for an exchange. She really blows it out of there, and the Kappa Kappa Gamma rider's trying to go with her. Jack, I'm looking down here in the, in the pit, and they are going to do an exchange. She took the long route around that corner. It's not going to impact her too much because she had an excellent burn, but she did take the long route. Reich really had a tremendous turn on the bike. And here's the exchange. And Kappa's doing an exchange as well, so they both have the opportunity to get together and bridge back up to the front. Well, the distance is about the distance between their pits, which is about 35 yards. And Teeter right now is alone on the lead. And that's Katie Douglas on the bike for them. She's a, she's a veteran rider with a lot of experience. She's looking to take him to the last lap. Kappa Kappa Gamma closing the gap pretty rapidly to get right back into that pack and an aggressive move 
through the inside. The apron is made of cement. And <laughs> we call that gutter ball racing. It's fun to see the girls out there not afraid to throw some elbows. So the, the, the officials don't like to see it. I think it makes for great racing. <laughs> <laughs> so there we saw the teeter rider kind of flick her elbow, saying, all right, it's your turn to come to the front now. So there they are, wheel on wheel once again. Teeter in purple in front with Katie Douglas in the saddle. And Teeter's got a lot of confidence right now. You know, I'm not sure. They, they wanted to be there, and, and now they know they are there. So that's a huge confidence boost for them. They've never won the race. They're looking to do something that's un unprecedented. We, we just saw Mia Dragon flick her elbow again, telling the capper rider to pull through. That's the universal language in bike racing. Hey, why don't you come out here and have some share of the fun? And it's nice, nice to do that, right, Dylan? Get a little draft, whether you need it or not. <laughs> That's right, you know. And, and we're coming down towards the end of the race, so she wants, she wants to, you know, put out enough, enough effort to stay in the front, but at the same time, in the back of her mind, she's got to save a little, save a little for that final lap. Those were lapped riders going around the tier and Kappa Kappa Gamma riders who are still one to teeters in purple and Kappa Kappa Gamma in yellow. They are about to lap Bella Veloce, which was at one time a serious contender in this race. Oh, and it couldn't work out even better for him. That's Abby Cooper, our winner of missing out on the bike right now. Wow. They're both getting a little draft, you know, still separating from Theta. It couldn't work out any better for Teeter and Kappa. That's right. That was just a really well-timed lap because you can see the gap is really opening up. The Bella Valencia rider's on the front right now pulling, and she's not even looking back. She's like, hey, I'll go on the front and pull for a while. You guys jump on my wheel. Kappa Alpha Theta getting ready for an exchange, and Kappa Alpha Theta needs a miracle. This race is more than three quarters gone. Coming up to the start-finish line for the 78th time in a 100-lap race. The exchange, and that's not spectacular again. Nicole Vincent on the bike, and they are counting on something amazing out of her. She's got 110 yards to make up. That bike-to-bike -bike exchange really slows Theta down. Um, they're looking for a big performance out of Nicole. Nicole won the race for Theta two years ago. Um, she may not get to have that opportunity today. She's going to have to try to close this. You know, Jason, according to the paperwork that I'm getting up here in the booth, it says that Bella Veloce is in fourth place right now. Yep, there are only three teams on the lead lap. Okay, so they are a lap down, Dylan. I, okay. Maybe they should get a lap for style points with those plaid shorts. That's what you were thinking. <laughs> Teeter in purple and Kappa Kappa Gamma in yellow, helping each other with the effort. And it looks as if Teeter is coming in for an exchange and Kappa Kappa Gamma will as well. And this is an alliance. Clearly these two teams are trying to make it just a two team race. And for all signs right now, it certainly looks to be that way. That's right, Jack. The only chance that Theta has right now is if the Kappa Kappa the Gamma Rider and the Teeter Rider. Oh, that was a close exchange there. And and a move by Kappa Kappa Gamma to stay on the bike with 20 to go. And so they send the rider around again. Was it a bluff or was that a spontaneous decision? <laughs> Jason, what do you think? Is that a move out of the playbook or what? Oh, that's a classic move. Bill Noss knows them all. He, uh, yeah, he has the fastest lap on this track, a 31-second lap. He's down there. He's been coaching these girls for years. They're, they're a well-oiled machine. Well, it didn't work, though, because uh, the tier rider is really closing on the tiring Kappa Kappa Gamma rider. A story that I see from down here, guys, is that Meredith Horner's still not back on the bike, on a training bike for Kappa. She's out of the race. Um, that, that does impact them uh, very, very much so. They, they need her leadership out there right now. I think Teeter has a lot of confidence, a lot of confidence. So I'd watch out for him. Yeah, Teeter right now up by 60 yards after the Kappa Kappa Gamma exchange. That's right, Jack. And I think the Theta Rider right here is actually going to bring the Kappa Kappa Gamma Rider back. And it's going to be Teeter out in front all by herself right now. Well, the lead is about 80 yards right now.
So the Tito Rider's off all by herself, and the Theta and Kappa Rider are back together. Th that's Mia Dragon on the bike for Teeter. She's the girl with the quick lap. She's doing a lot of work right now. Kappa ha has a rookie rider on. Uh, Theta has Nicole Vincent, who's a, who, who is a veteran rider. Um, Teeter's got a little advantage. We've seen races shake like shake out like this before. There's only 18 to go. That's right, Jason. Maybe Kappa's going to pay for their effort at the beginning of the race right now because they've got a 20, 30 yard gap to close. Mia Dragon is coming toward the pit for Teeter. A tremendous turn on the bike for her. She makes the exchange 120 yards in the lead. And let's see how much it closes. Not that much. It's still about 55 or so for the new Teeter rider after she has gotten up to pace. The teeter rider right now is Jess Lindemann. She she has a lot of experience. She she races with the men a lot in the summertime in Cat 3's races. Um, has set the set the bar for Indiana University collegiate cycling this year. I this 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 is definitely a move. You're you're seeing it all shake out right now. Um, the the girl on the bike for the cap is is a rookie. She's not she's not really sure how to respond to this, and they have a huge gap. Lindemann goes past the start finish line, where the pole sitters are. And Kappa wants one more lap out of its rider. The gap is growing. It's up to about 120 yards now. And you can see it. It's about the length of the soccer field here. Kappa Alpha Theta with a burst to move into second place. Lindemann will go at least another lap for Teeter. Kappa Alpha Theta giving huge vocal support to Nicole Vincent, who's on the bike. She's An exchange, and now oh, Jessica no. Sapp. Oh, goodness. Has to pick up the bike from her fallen teammate, and it is falling apart, literally as well as figuratively, for Kappa Kappa Gamma. They are now down by a half a lap, almost three quarters of a lap. 15 to go. Let's kind of see what happens here. You want it to be lined up straight. Um, Allison Edwards, a rookie rider, she didn't really bring it in straight. It, it, it's a tough exchange. It's a critical point in the race. I think that's what happens when you're getting tired. It, it, you know, you could see she kind of came in and just fell to pieces. It was a total yard sale. Well, they're looking for veteran leadership at a time like that. You know, 14 to go. You want your best riders on the bike. And remember, Kappa Kappa Gamma is down one. Yeah, that's Jess Sapp, the, the sprinter for Kappa Kappa Gamma on the bike. She's, she's just trying her best to close it. She wants to be there at the end. But she's not going to be available at the end, I would think. I mean, this is 14 laps from the end right here. That, that's the risk. You're absolutely right, You're Jack. Gonna, they're going to have to spend it now to get close. She's Good almost half a lap down on the Tito Rider. She's doing an exchange here. This might be her opportunity to really close the gap. Theta Rider is coming through the start finish area right now. Well, Sarah Reich, the rookie, is back on. Remember, she had that tremendous turn just about 15 laps ago, and she is blazing out in front. It is a lead of about 70 yards for Teeter. Half Alpha Theta in royal blue in second place, and Reich is just flying through on the inside, going past lapped riders, extending the gap. She looks good, too. Look at her. She's nice and low, low flat back. She's really flying around this track. Now her lead over Vincent of Kappa Kappa Gamma is about a hundred yards right now. Yeah, the the Tita rider is already into Excuse the turn me. one. Vincent is is a, a Cap Alpha Theta rider. My mistake. That's Elizabeth Oliver riding for Cap Alpha Theta. It looks like you know the the we could see the Tita rider entering turn one, and we didn't even see the Cap Alpha Theta rider coming out of turn four yet. So she's got a really big gap right now. Cap Alpha Theta with a very slow exchange. And, and Dylan and Jack, I was down in the teeter pit. 
they wanted no distractions. They're, they're trying to win the race right now. Uh, no time to talk to the TV cameras, just trying to make it a race. Well, unless something really strange happens in the last two and a half miles, I don't see it not being Teeter's race. A superb turn again by Sarah Reich. And Teeter getting ready for an exchange with a gargantuan gap. It's a bike exchange. Yeah, Jason, if they keep this up, it looks like Teeter will have plenty of time for TV time after the race on the top of the podium. <laughs> Katie Douglas is in the saddle for Teeter. And she is blowing this thing apart. Ten laps to go. The record, remember, is just a shade under an hour and seven minutes. They're an hour and two into this. I don't think the record's going to fall today. I don't blistering, think so. blistering early pace, but a lot of teams had to ride alone. That's right, Jack. It was almost like an individual time trial out there. And we see the Teeter rider. She's got nine laps to go now with a very considerable gap. Kappa Kappa Gamma is now almost a half a lap down. It is Teeter's race to lose right now. Katie Douglas, one of three seniors on that Teeter team, and Wright, the rookie. Hey guys, Liz Milne's on the bike for, for uh, Tap Alpha Theta. Um, she is closing a little bit of the gap. It's about a quarter lap lead. As Milne crosses the start finish line, yeah, it's about 80 yards. Yep, maybe a little less than a quarter lap. Thetis has to throw their big horses out there all the time. They've been, they've been chasing this entire race. There's Liz Milne. Twice before she has raced in the Little 500. This is just an unreal effort right now by Katie Douglas. She sticks her tongue out as she goes by. Cinder's on her leg. She knows this is the race of her life right now. She's trying to do something that we've seen in the past. One team kind of escape away and, and, and stay away from that field sprint. They've done it. She lost about 20 yards on her lead in that last lap. It's down to about 70, maybe 65 right now. I don't think it's time to celebrate quite yet. An exchange coming as Teeter gets a rider ready to go. I think it's Mia Dragon who's getting set to go with seven left. Well, I guess they think it's not going to come down to those 10 seconds. Off the exchange, her gap is down to about 40 yards. It, it, and if you're Theta right now, what they need Theta rider right here is actually going to bring the Kappa Kappa Gamma rider back and it's going to be Teeter out in front all by herself right now. Well, the lead is about 80 yards right now. So the Teeter rider's off all by herself, and the Theta and Kappa rider are back together. Th that's Mia Dragon on the bike for Teeter. She's the girl with the quick lap. She's doing a lot of work right now. Kappa ha has a rookie rider on. Uh, Theta has Nicole Vincent, who's a, who, who is a veteran rider. Um, Teeter's got a little advantage. We've seen races shake like shake out like this before. There's only 18 to go. That's right, Jason. Maybe Kappa's going to pay for their effort at the beginning of the race right now because they've got a 20, 30-yard gap to close. Mia Dragon is coming toward the pit for Teeter. A tremendous turn on the bike for her. She makes the exchange 120 yards in the lead. And let's see how much it closes. Not that much. It's still about 55 or so for the new Teeter rider after she has gotten up to pace. The teeter rider right now is Jess Lindemann. She she has a lot of experience. She she races with the men a lot in the summertime in Cat 3's races. Um, has set the set the bar for Indiana University collegiate cycling this year. I this 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 is definitely a move. You're you're seeing it all shake out right now. Um, the the girl on the bike for the cap is is a rookie. She's not she's not really sure how to respond to this, and they have a huge gap. 
Lindemann goes past the start finish line where the pole sitters are. And Kappa wants one more lap out of its rider. The gap is growing. It's up to about 120 yards now. And you can see it. It's about the length of the soccer field here. Kappa Alpha Theta with a burst to move into second place. Lindemann will go at least another lap for Teeter. Kappa Alpha Theta giving huge vocal support to Nicole Vincent, who's on the bike. She's An exchange, and now uh, Jessica no. Sapp. Oh, goodness. Has to pick up the bike from her fallen teammate, and it is falling apart, literally as well as figuratively, for Kappa Kappa Gamma. They are now down by a half a lap, almost three quarters of a lap. 15 to go. Let's kind of see what happens here. You want it to be lined up straight. Um, Allison Edwards, a rookie rider, she didn't really bring it in straight. It, it, it's a tough exchange. It's a critical point in the race. I think that's what happens when you're getting tired. It, it, you know, you could see she kind of came in and just fell to pieces. It was a total yard sale. Well, they're looking for veteran leadership at a time like that. You know, 14 to go. You want your best riders on the bike. And remember, Kappa Kappa Gamma is down one. So that's Jess Sapp, the, the sprinter for Kappa Kappa Gamma on the bike. She's, she's just trying her best to close it. She wants to be there at the end. But she's not going to be available at the end, I would think. I mean, this is 14 laps from the end right here. That, that's the risk. You're absolutely right, You're Jack. Gonna, they're going to have to spend it now to get close. She's Good almost half a lap down on the Tito rider. Who's doing an exchange here. This might be her opportunity to really close the gap. The Theta rider is coming through the start-finish area right now. Well, Sarah Reich, the rookie, is back on. Remember, she had that tremendous turn just about 15 laps ago, and she is blazing out in front. It is a lead of about 70 yards for Teeter. Kappa Alpha Theta in royal blue in second place, and Reich is just flying through on the inside, going past lapped riders, extending the gap. She looks good too. Look at her. She's nice and low, low flat back. She's really flying around this track. Uh, her lead over Vincent of Kappa Kappa Gamma is about 100 yards right now. Yeah, the, the Tita rider is already into the Excuse turn me. one. Vincent is, is a, a Kappa Alpha Theta rider. My mistake. That's Elizabeth Oliver riding for Kappa Alpha Theta. It looks like, you know, the, the, we could see the Tita rider entering turn one, and we didn't even see the Kappa Theta rider coming out of turn four yet. So she's got a really big gap right now. Kappa Alpha Theta with a very slow exchange. And, and Dylan and Jack, I was down in the teeter pit. They wanted no distractions. They're, they're trying to win the race right now. Uh, no time to talk to the TV cameras, just trying to make it a race. Well, unless something really strange happens in the last two and a half miles, I don't see it not being Tears' race. A superb turn again by Sarah Wright. And Teeter getting ready for an exchange with a gargantuan gap. It's a bike exchange. Yeah, Jason, if they keep this up, it looks like Teeter will have plenty of time for TV time after the race on the top of the podium. <laughs> Katie Douglas is in the saddle for Teeter. And she is blowing this thing apart. Ten laps to go. The record, remember, is just a shade under an hour and seven minutes. They're an hour and two into this. I don't think the record's going to fall today. I don't blistering, think so. blistering early pace, but a lot of teams had to ride alone. That's right, Jack. It was almost like an individual time trial out there. And we see the Teeter rider. She's got nine laps to go now with a very considerable gap. Kappa Kappa Gamma is now almost a half a lap down. 
It is Teeter's race to lose right now. Katie Douglas, one of three seniors on that Teeter team, and Wright, the rookie. Hey guys, Liz Milne's on the bike for, for uh, Tap Alpha Theta. Um, she is closing a little bit of the gap. It's about a quarter lap lead. As Milne crosses the start finish line, yeah, it's about 80 yards. Yep, maybe a little less than a quarter lap. Thetis has to throw their big horses out there all the time. They've been, they've been chasing this entire race. There's Liz Milne. Twice before she has raced in the Little 500. This is just an unreal effort right now by Katie Douglas. She sticks her tongue out as she goes by. Cinder's on her leg. She knows this is the race of her life right now. She's trying to do something that we've seen in the past. One team kind of escape away and, and, and stay away from that field sprint. They've done it. She lost about 20 yards on her lead in that last lap. It's down to about 70, maybe 65 right now. I don't think it's time to celebrate quite yet. An exchange coming as Teeter gets a rider ready to go. I think it's Mia Dragon who's getting set to go with seven left. Well, I guess they think it's not going to come down to those 10 seconds. Off the exchange, her gap is down to about 40 yards. It, it, and if you're Theta right now, what they need to do is get that wheel and sit. They need to get that wheel. They need to close that gap. That's right, Jason. We're looking at like a 10-yard gap right now. And if the Theta rider can close it down, we have a whole new bike race. Well, well it's uh, not. It's getting bigger right now because Dragon is really putting it down. You know, these are single-gear bikes. And if there's one thing that has made Dragon distinct today, it is her phenomenal cadence that she's able to turn on that bike. She just looks really smooth. She's looking to the pit. Coach is telling her to keep going. She came on fresh and just really pulled away. An exchange for Kappa Alpha Theta. Off the exchange, the gap has gotten huge again. It's a full 110 again. It might be bigger than that. We'll get a good measure as Dragon gets to the end of the straight. Here she is racing. It looks like there's nobody else on the track there for a moment. And we're looking. And there's the gap. It's 130 yards. There are five laps to go. It's just a little over a mile. That would be a huge percentage change. Looks as if Teeter is going to go for one more lap from Dragon. That's right. And it looks like uh, our second and third place teams are just about to come together, although Kappa is going to come and do an exchange. And we see the Teeter rider here. She's just got her head down, putting the hammer down. They're doing short sets, something we've seen in past races. You know, when you, when you get a gap, there's only so long you can go on that little five bike. So they're Teeter's trying to do short laps, you know, two, four, five lap sets. She's going to bring it into Jess Lindemann. Um, look for Jess to maybe maybe close it out. You know, Chris Wytowicz has excellent strategy in there. He's won the race a couple times as a co and now he's in, in the pit as a coach. Uh, he he's has a good strategy for his girls at this point. Dragon coming into the pits. Here's the exchange to Jessica Lindemann. It's pretty clean. Lindemann probably loses about 10 yards there, but she's going to try to close it out with three to go. It's now or never for Kappa Alpha Theta to try to get back into this thing. Kappa Kappa Gamma has closed the lead back down to about 100 yards. We heard about that 10 seconds from Mia Drag and Dragon. We thought it was going to come in the final turn of the race, but maybe it came on the next to last turn on the bike. That great acceleration off the exchange might have decided this thing. And Lindemann is riding with adrenaline right now. She knows she's got about a half a mile to go. Two to go as she goes past the start finish line. Kappa Kappa Gamma has climbed back into second place. A heroic effort here. And Jack, that's Meredith Horner back on the bike. She's came back alive. She's out there. They're trying their best to pull it back. I just don't know if they have enough time. I don't see it because there's a lap and a half to go for Teeter. And the lead right now is 100 yards. It will not be a record-setting performance. We're already 30 seconds above 
the previous women's little 500 record. The white flag is out, and Lindemann has 410 meters to go before Teeter will be the champion. Teeter has never won it. Kappa Alpha Theta second as they go past the Kappa Kappa Gamma exchange on the final lap. That is a gassed rider. Kappa Kappa Gamma gave it all today on an emotional day, but it is Teeter's day. Stupendous riding by the rookie, Sarah Wright. Katie Douglas was awesome. Dragan turned in maybe the turn of the race, and Lindemann is going to bring it home. The 2005 Women's Little 500. It's Teeter's day. She's done it. Kappa Alpha Theta second. Kappa Kappa Gamma third. For the 13th time, Kappa Kappa Gamma gets a top 10 finish. It's pretty amazing that Meredith was able to come back from out of the medical tent and really put it together for her team for a podium finish. You got to hand it to them. They rode a great race today. But Teeter really showed a lot to make up that huge early gap to they, get such a great contribution from a rookie and then rely on the experience of the three two-timers, the three seniors, Dragan, Lindemann, and Douglas. That's right, Jack. You know, they really kind of hung back all day long and, and kind of played off of Theta and Kappa Kappa Gamma, and at the end, they had the most gas. Well, the effort expended, and Teeter will roll home a champion, and the Kappas give her a thumbs up. She rolls into the pits, and the celebration is on. That's great. Well, Jason, you think they're going to have some time for the television now? I, I, I'm down here pretty close to them. I think I, think I may be able to grab them. See if we can get a camera over here. Hey, Mia, it was an incredible performance today. Your set was crucial. Yeah. Um, yeah, I had did three laps all out and came through in the end. We had some critical errors earlier, but we made up for them in the end. Katie, Katie, you went down at one point in the race. You came up, you recovered, you pulled into victory. I, I can't believe it. I mean, I just everyone was just like, just forget about the pain, just forget about the pain. And, and I did it. I don't know how I did it. I really don't know how. I'm so happy, Jason. You're a true little five superstar. Great job. Great job. We're going to go back up to you guys in the booth. It's pandemonium. Pandem See if we can get Chris Wytowicz, the coach, the coach of the Teeter women. It's a mosh pit down there. <laughs> Chris, Chris. Chris, it, it, it was an epic finish. Um, did you pattern that finish after any race you've seen in the past, or you just go, uh -huh. go on the fly? You know what? I told you it was going to come down to heart and who wanted it the most. And uh, everyone was tired out there. It wasn't just us, but I, I, I made them. They told me I can't go back on. I said, you've got to, one more. And uh, they came out there with the most heart. I didn't really plan on that, no. I, I told them to attack. When I see some blood, I'm going to go take it. I'm going to go for the blood. And, uh, I saw the blood and I went for it. It was excellent coaching. We saw short sets at the end. That was all you. Yeah, that was. Um, basically, I knew I'd have to ask them uh, how many sets you got, how many laps you got in here. They're like zero. I go, do you have five? No. Do you have three? Please, do you have three? I got three. Okay, do three. That's it. Because they weren't ca catching us. They were not catching us in the gaps. Usually, the team catches you on the gaps. We just kept pulling away a little bit. So it was great. Guys up there in the booth, I think we saw it play out early. Kappa did a lot of work early. <laughs> we have a happy Teeter coach. Teeter stayed with it, came through in the end. The last 25 laps made the race. And you'll never wash that cheek again. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. It's good to be back on the coaching end of this. I love this race. I love this game. Oh, my God. I, I rode with this guy. I got to cut him off right now or we'll be here all night. <laughs> I got to feel it's not the last time tonight he's going to get cut off. That's right. <laughs> uh, great, great day for Teeter. And a thrilling race as Kappa Kappa Gamma went out and tried to lap the field and put it away in the first 35 laps and very nearly did. But a couple of shaky turns and some dogged determination from Kappa Alpha Theta and Teeter who almost both single-handedly got themselves back in as we didn't see one of those sudden alliances struck up.
Yeah, you know, Jack, it was great racing today to see the Kappa team really take authority right from the beginning of the race and throw the hammer down and try to force the pace. I mean, that's not something that you see very often in the women's little five. Sometimes they tend to be a little bit more reserved and, and a little bit cautious, but this was a real bike racing today. And then the way that the Theta and the Kappa team tried to come together at the end was great. We'll be back for the celebration, the trophy presentations. We'll find out the identity of the most valuable rider at the Women's Little 500. Teeter is enjoying its moment of glory here, having been presented with the replica of the Borg Warner Trophy. The Borg Warner Trophy, the real deal, of course, goes to the champion of the Indy 500. And an outstanding and gutsy effort as Teeter, without a lot of help, got itself back into the lead pack and then had the talent. Dragon with a stupendous turn on the bike. The penultimate turn really deciding this race. The unofficial results, Kappa Kappa Gamma coming in second behind Teeter with Kappa Alpha Theta third, Kappa Delta fourth, and Alpha Phi, which had that disastrous fall in the exchange in the first 10 or 15 laps, getting into fifth place. I believe there were only three teams on the lead lap for when the race ended. Now they will remember this for a long, long time. Yeah, you know, Jack, it's really interesting that this race really comes down to more than just the individual riders. It's all about the team. It's about the exchanges, the strategy, the coach. It's really exciting to see how everything comes together and a team puts it up like that. I'm just astounded that bicycle racing is not more popular in the United States. <laughs> you know, a country that follows auto racing with such incredible passion. You've seen the, uh, the explosion of the NASCAR circuit in the last 15 years. And I'm not taking anything away from them, but you know, when, when the humans are the engine, it's even more interesting, more passionate, more individualized. Jason Sonneborn has been in the middle of it all day long, Jason. I, I'm, I'm down here with four-time champion Kappa Alpha Theta. They came in second today. It was still a great race. Liz, you closed many a gaps today. It was a fast race, definitely. I just was, had focused on the leader and just trying to go as fast as I could. It was a time trial race. <laughs> N Nicole, you guys' constant results has to be a credit to the program. Um, you come in every year in great shape, ready to go. Tell us a little bit about your program. Well, we start training in the fall. And, uh, like hanging out, we're out getting our base in, and then we have some really good trainers, Ann Holderhoff, who won in 2000, and Keith Leonard, who help us out with our training and make it a little more specific for the springtime. So it's just a good program. Yeah. You guys do an incredible job. Brittany transferred over from uh, collegiate soccer to Little Five this year. Yeah, I played club soccer for IU. And? And what? Now you're out here laying it down on the track. Yep, exactly. <laughs> Tom, lots of coaching today. What, what was it like from the coach's viewpoint? Well, I mean, the Kappas love to scare the crap out of everybody early, and they certainly did that. But I think what they didn't count on was the tenacity that defines this Cap Alpha Theta team. They were really out there, and I've never seen a Theta team leave more on the track than these four people. And I'm going to miss Liz and Nicole so, so much next year. But I think they have certainly proven their ability to pass the knowledge base and, most important, pass the passion to the next generation of Theta riders. Absolutely. So you saw a great race. Kappa laid it down early. Um, Theta hung in there, and Teeter took away with the checkered flag. An amazing race, 2005. They're goofing around on the bikes now. <laughs> there was no time to be goofy earlier in this race as Teeter had to make up a huge deficit. They were about two-thirds of a lap down. Now, these are the official results, and you'll note the change of position between second and third place. Kappa Alpha Theta in second behind the champions, Teeter, and Kappa Kappa Gamma officially in third. Bella Veloce in fourth, and Kappa Delta 
in fifth place. Alpha Phi gets knocked down to sixth in the official results. Well, it wasn't the, the wire photo finish that we saw last year in the women's race. But it was an extremely emotional day from start to finish. Jason Sonneborn has more. Well, I'm down here with Meredith Horner. They've had an emotional week. They rode an incredible race today. Um, they'd really like to commemorate their effort today to Ashley Krause, a sorority sister. Um, today, today's race was just awesome. It's my fourth year, and it was a really tough race. I was sorry I had to miss some of it, but um, Teeter did such a great job. Theta, all the teams out there were just incredible. So, um, and for us, this is really for Ashley, and we're just glad we got to do it and made it through safely. So. And I don't want to ask this question, but you guys did a lot of work early, and it and it it hurts you in the end. Teeter, Teeter came out on top. Right. Do you regret it at all? No, not at all. I mean, that's just kind of the luck of the race. I think, you know, if we had held anything back, we might not have finished where we did. So, um, you know, I think that today was a tough day for me being sick, but for the rest of my team, they had to carry all the weight, and I wasn't able to help out. So it was a, it was a, you know, a good race, and I'm really happy for Teeter because they've been a really strong team in the years, past years, so I think they deserve it. So. It's a, it's a new program and, and, and a good win for them. Um, you know, what you see out of Meredith is an incredible little 500 citizen. She'll go on to help out with this race for years to come. So thank you. Thank you. Back up to you guys in the booth. Thank you, Jason. Uh, Dylan, you know, it seemed that the emotion that Kappa Kappa Gamma brought into this day was, was being positively channeled, and uh, they, they did leave it all on the track. They, they emptied the tank, and... Unfortunately for them, the tank was empty about 45 laps in. Yeah, you know, and, and, and we heard Meredith say that she wasn't feeling well today, and I'm sure they tried to keep that quiet until the race because they didn't want to give away their game face. But, uh, you know, like I said, it was really great to see him come out with all cylinders firing and really throw down in the beginning of the race. I mean, it made for an exciting race. Well, Tita rules the day, and for the first time, they are champions, and they will go down in legend and... They will remember this. You know, as, as we look back at this day, you cannot help but think of, of Ashley Krause, whose life suddenly and tragically came to an end Monday in the automobile accident that happened directly in front of her sorority house as she was on her way to uh, an organizing meeting for another charitable effort. And, uh, you know, the winner of the loss really pales uh, today in comparison to the, the tragedy that her family and her friends and Indiana University suffered. And even though we at HDNet never even got to meet her, it, you, you feel a, a terrible sense of loss and that is shared throughout everybody in this race. The effort that they all showed is something that we also will remember for a long, long time. You've been watching HDNet's exclusive high definition coverage of the Little 500 the executive producer of HDNet Sports and the producer of today's program is Daryl E. Walt. Our director, the incomparable Hank Lena. HDNet Remote Engineering by Andrew Paris and Daniel Neighbors. For everybody in our crew here in Bloomington, Indiana, and a special thanks to the Indiana University Student Foundation for all of its help. For Jason Sonneborn, and Dylan Casey, I'm Jack Edwards. Once again, the winner of the 2005 Little 500 Women's Race, Teeter. We'll see you tomorrow for the men's Little 500 from the IU campus in Bloomington, Indiana. You've been watching an exclusive high-definition presentation of HDNet.